Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp. I'm here to talk about a lot of different things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Kicking things off, we're talking about some things that are happening in the Ukraine. U.S. Secretary of State Andrew Blinken stopped by the Ukraine this week, and, and as a support began to arrive in Ukraine, the Kremlin has warned that ominous language alluding towards a nuclear option. America's goals is to see Russia weakened and would no longer be able to invade other countries, according to Blinken. However, we're still dealing with a major superpower, and all these stories are made to vilify uh, Russia with no way of reconstructing our relationship. So I'm not for Russia necessarily, but at the same time, this Russian invasion has to stop but by any means necessary, by the point of not... Uh, having boots on the ground. So invading a country is pointless in the world we live in, and so that we, by creating that kind of mindset, uh, but we, in a lot of ways we should be working together. Uh, we have uh, too many people thinking that they know best and letting people of Ukraine suffer. So the best way to end this is to end it completely and utterly uh, with as little uh, collateral damage as possible. That's just my opinion. Um, and of course, you know, just this morning, a missile strike on the capital while Blinken was in the uh, city of the capital city of Kyiv took place during the secretary's stay in the Ukraine. One person was confirmed dead with nine injured. The target or closest thing was about a factory that was uh, manufactured missiles and one that was made that makes vacuums. So this is one that I just heard on NPR this morning. Um, peace talks were on the table for some time, but talks just seem to be passing memory as we keep poking the bear that also happens to have nuclear arms. Um, there are no glory when everyone is dead. Although America has refrained from getting boots on the ground, NATO is getting really, really close. If Putin was worried about NATO being next door, uh, they, uh, Finland and Sweden are now moving towards being a part of NATO. Um, so they had a nice buffer for a while. It's kind of like, imagine yourself uh, um, a guy in a bathroom, a bunch of urinals lined up. You always want to keep a buffer between you just to feel comfortable and just imagine that buffer is completely gone. And so you have that uncomfortable feeling of someone who could stand right next to you while they're going to the bathroom. Terrible example, but it's the point. In the beginning, the fear that Ukraine might join NATO propelled Putin to this conflict and created a buffer between mainland Russia with NATO and their allies. Now we're at a uh, row now, uh, but you know, Russia's foreign minister has accused NATO of uh, fighting a proxy war by supplying military aid in Ukraine. And uh, U.S. Uh, military aid, it's looking to be more and more money is going into this conflict. And um, even on NPR, they even mentioned that as much as $67 billion of aid are going towards Ukraine in their defense against um, the uh, Russian invasion. So the Guardian reported that Ser uh, Sergei Lavov told Russia state media uh, that NATO is in essence, is engaged in a war with Russia through a proxy and is arming that proxy. War means war, regardless of if there's boots on the ground or not, according to Russian officials. So if you invest in a company, you have to deal with the good times and endure the bads, unless you're a hedge fund. So the world is not necessarily a hedge fund. So moving on, um, and we're talking, and speaking of hedge funds, corporations, all that stuff, it seems like Amazon has a uh, uh, let the genie out of the bottle and waves of union organizations have been put into place. So Best Armor Alabama was basically a shining example of how uh, Amazon can basically bust the union first and foremost and then through Staten Island and New York unions. Uh, uh, Chris, Christian Smalls is a big name in the union drive up in the New York region and so through that they're able to move forward in this, and then now a lot of uh, Congress folks like Bernie Sanders went to a rally up in Staten Island to help step up this movement, and he also called out Biden saying that we should, uh, uh, and it was quoted in saying he'd be the most, uh, well, okay, I'm, I'm mixing all my notes uh, all over. So Bernie said, the time for talk is over. Bernie said in a rally for a union drive in Staten Island earlier this week. Bernie requested that any federal contract should be put on hold or cut off completely as Amazon has been using anti-union busting tactics. Many ways that the federal government can get in place to protect the people in their union forming. You know it's bad when union talks consist of uh, bathroom breaks in the language of unions. They're pro-act. 
which, you know, kind of just kind of went off the wayside. I was talking about it a little bit last year a lot and talking about how uh, many different tactics can be uh, financial uh, p uh, penalizing uh, companies for union busting tactics, messing with the workers. But Congress has kind of dropped it off of the face of the earth. So far, this upcoming election, we'll see which party will position themselves as pro-union and how the, to benefit the workers. Um, which has been a deciding factor in many elections, uh, economy. That's one of the biggest things that a lot of people are concerned about is basically making ends meet, be, uh, being able to be in positions where people can feel comfortable and have that uh, financial uh, safety net that a lot of people saw uh, losing during the pandemic. So, um, yeah, there's just, uh, definitely a lot of stuff going on. And um, the uptick in GOP nominees getting the bump uh, because they addressed a lot of economic concerns and not coasting on the Trump is bad wave that we saw. So uh, I want to end it right there. I don't want to get too political, even though I basically did. So Missoula stuff, another Riverfront Triangle uh, push. So, you know, if you guys know a little bit history of the Riverfront Triangle, it was a site next to um, the the St. Pat's Hospital. They've been trying to develop since 1980. So about 40 plus years or so, they're trying to figure out exactly what they're gonna do with the site. The city owns a lot of the property. And then there's a lot of areas around here that also used to be owned by the hospital. Still kind of owned, but they're still kind of working out the details. But but the, the whole idea is that the city of Missoula wants to create like a whole new kind of like district of downtown convention center. Uh, uh, parks, just a lot of access to trails and whatnot like that. So they want to make a basically another kind of hip strip mega area right there. And they're just trying to figure out who wants to do that. So right now we have yet another developer that's uh, courting, and this is kind of like how. Uh, uh, so let's see. Or I gotta catch up back on my notes because I every time I leave my notes I get confused. All right. So now Capital V Partners has picked up the pieces and is wrapping up the due diligence of making this. This firm intends to purchase all seven acres and develop in a single master plan with the backing of the partners and investors. Uh, mixed use and plenty of space for the new corridor for the Orange Street Bridge and beyond. Uh, they have plans on plans on plans on rezoning to boot. Uh, the main goal was to basically create a new event space. One of the bigger things is the city has a lot to say on their property, but because of that have a lot to say. Uh, this is one of those projects that developers are confident they'll be able to handle such major undertaking, essentially creating another hot spot for businesses. According to Capital V Partners, which primarily operates in the Mountain West, has completed more than two billion dollars worth of projects, some larger than the plans for the Riverfront Triangle. So a lot of things sound pretty good, um, but I've lived in Missoula long enough to know better. But hey, Missoula is, a, a develop, is in a development renaissance with hundreds of projects happening in and around Missoula. I prefer to be wrong most times, but um, that's just we're just going to see if this is going to turn out to be something good or not. So if you want to know about upcoming projects in the city of Missoula, you can go to engagemissoula.com where you can see about 19 pages worth of links going towards uh, current and upcoming projects in the Missoula area. So there's a lot of great stuff on there. Um, um, so one thing that also happened within the last week or so, um, this is basically old news, is that I don't want to I don't want to talk about it too much, but the uh, the there was a um, a bill that was presented to a Montana legislature to put a 2% tax on property taxes. Uh, this was brought to my attention through the city council report where Mike Nugent, uh, city councilor, uh, highlighted the fact that a 2% cap per year would have a cause of lack of flexibility. I'm not saying that they should raise taxes, far from it, but any restrictions on the government always comes at a cost. You're, uh, you tax corporations less and you have those million dollar bonuses that go on to the owners and shareholders while the rest of us expect them to trickle down their money. Um, if this pandemic has shown anything, the rich got richer and even when the people try to do something that is fair, we're gaslit into thinking wanting more means less for us when it's really about them. So Todd O'Hare is executive director of Montana Chamber of Commerce and he was quoted in saying, uh, Montana businesses are supportive of comprehensive tax reform. CI 121 is neither comprehensive nor is it even reform. It is a clumsy, clumsy uh, budgian um, similar to the bull in a China closet, he said in a in the revenue interim meeting. Um, so most legislators took their heads um, and decided to vote down this drastic bill. No one spoke in favor of this bill. Also, it didn't hurt to mention their own paychecks would be safe as well. So uh, archerism is hard in a political motivator. So anyways, um, up next we have an art clip from the Missoula 
art museum with an extra feature from the words of the artist himself, Brian McGuire. Disclaimer, some of the imagery uh, may not be suitable for all audiences. So without further ado, here is um, In the Light of Conscious. My name is Brian McGuire. Um, the exhibition here is titled uh, Brian McGuire in the Light of Conscience. Uh, I was fortunate that the museum uh, who ordered me this title. Uh, you know, it doesn't really say who's conscious. <laughs> it's in the light of. There's an ambiguity there, which I'm glad of. <laughs> And I, I try to figure, well, what draws all these works together? And, and it basically, this is, it is the absence of civil society as we know it, is what makes this show happen. Uh, I mean, here in Mexico, you have the kind of, that image of the fascist police. which is kind of accidental, I know it's accidental, but it's still blatantly in front of you that the police are offering a fascist salute at their inauguration, followed very quickly by the police have taken out 43 um, teacher training students and murdered them. And the two images go go completely together. The Libya was destroyed by NATO bomb bombers, you know, uh, and the people who attempt now to get to Europe drown in the Mediterranean. The destruction of the civil war in, 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 in Syria. You know, a theory of beauty as something which lifts the spirit um, is, is ex it, 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 that underpins all this painting. Even though the subject is, is uh, you know, tragic, continuously tragic. Well, 
I go back to probably you mentioned hope. I, I think of the, the Marxist idea of um, struggle between thesis, antithesis. You know, hope is still there, but it's not guaranteed. You know, you only have to, to live in, 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 in the now is, is, is what we've got. Um, it's, um, I'm, I'm, I was talking about how, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so pleased this has been put together um, and it, it as I say it, the medium is it, it carries the hope the image carries the present you know And that art installation will be at the Missoula Art Museum in downtown Missoula. You guys can check that out anytime until August 13th. All right, let's kick things off with some movies that are coming out this weekend. Kicking it off is this one that I'm about to talk about right now as soon as I bring up my notes. Yes, it is hatching. Hmm, it's about an egg is found, but the egg is evil. So basically that's uh, most horror movies. It's like they find a thing, but it's evil. Anyways, watch a series of unsettling horror films meant to make you think that even the cutest little baby can grow up to be a demon. Remember Ugly Duckling? Well, get ready for Beautiful Bastard. I'm pretty sure this baby Baby is born, but grows up too fast, causing eyebrows to be raised, and using one's motherly instincts against the mother and those close to her. Who wrote this? Me. Um, then we got memory. Uh, gaslighting Liam Neeson, who is a retired assassin or whatever, has to kill somebody. Stars in this movie about an organized gaslighting this poor old actor into doing more action roles. All oh, right, this is a movie. So this movie is uh, has a gun and a window with a bullet hole in it and the story is basically about an assassin who gets pulled back just when he thought he was out they bring him back in that kind of action thing old man thing anyways Liam has been doing these old man action movies for, for quite some time now I think he really got his stride in his late 50s but now he's in his 70s and he's kicking things off with memory enjoy this movie or not or expect just another Liam Neeson movie it's like hey if you like the last one you'll probably like this one it doesn't really stray too much far from the formula hey by the way have you guys watched the movie the gray um, all right now time for a speed round we'll dive right into the series of movies of various things but this theme is uh, indie and d-list um, snipers uh, no fortress snipers eye from Bruce Willis's library of growing trash comes yet another don't miss old men with a shady past this one is about snipers on vacation in their sniper village anyways Bruce Willis has retired from acting from recent medical issues last chances to watch his movies um, then we got firebird USSR, LGBTQ movie about a 1970s military guys hooking up in a communist Russia. In communist Russia, closet comes out of you. Uh, that was stupid. All right, Vortex, last day of an old couple suffering dementia. Just a real bummer for those looking to be reminded how hard dementia can affect us. All right, moving on from this uh, bummer of a movie, let's uh, throw it over to um, a dubbing stuff for you guys. So this next uh, movie is from the 1947 movie, uh, The Sins of Harold Diddlebach. And it is uh, one of those old silent film uh, actors breaking out into the talkies. But I uh, took out all the audio and I redubbed it myself. So enjoy. I got the newspaper. I got the newspaper. Nope, 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 nope. Huh? Oh. Who's that slice of pecan pie? I right, just look away. I'm gonna be like Pepe Le Pew in this first Space Jam movie. Whoa. <laughs> no police, no witnesses. All right. <clears throat> hmm? 
Okay. Oh yeah. No. No. Don't worry about me. I'm, my name is George. I'm not here to bother you whatsoever, whatsoever. I'm just here to kind of look around and do some things here and there. Oh, hold on a second there. I see that you got the evening post. I just got the morning post. Perhaps maybe I could look at your evening post. Would that be okay? If that's no big problem. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't worry about this. I'll be perfectly fine if you say no. But I just need to know if I could just take all a right, quick All right, all right, all right. You can look at it, but then that's all you can well, do. Well, I'm pretty much obliged to you, um, sir. Hey, are you new in town? Oh, no, you're not going to dinner with Andre with me, okay? Well, that's a pretty good movie. I wouldn't say that uh, we shouldn't do that. Uh, well, um, it's just not... Uh, Can I borrow a penny? Well, fine. Just one penny. Just enough to buy your own newspaper. Well, uh, thank you very much, sir. Oh, I really appreciate you giving me that penny. Hmm. Oh, perhaps maybe you can mm -hmm. give me a little bit more just to, you know, help okay. me through the rest of the day. I no, don't... come on now. I'm, I don't... Here you go. Oh, wow, take, just that's very that. generous of you. I really appreciate that. You're a good Yeah, yeah, don't citizen. mention it, okay? I mean, seriously, just never mention it again, okay? Can you just never mention this, that I gave you money whatsoever? I don't want to have a reputation or anything like that. I'm not a generous person, you got it? Well, sure, I get it. Well, all right, then. I guess you do get it. All right, now off with you now. Well, I really can't give you much in return. Oh, no, that's an annoyance tax. Consider that paid in full, and I don't well, want you to— everyone needs company now and again, sir. Well, then maybe I'm just not in the mood to deal with you right now. You're oh, a stranger. Oh, no, 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 a stranger oh, now Oh, come on, a... no. I just don't know you that well, so just— Well, then let's get familiar with yeah, one yeah, another. Yeah. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Well, I'm really great company if you get to know me. All right, then what is your favorite band? If you don't answer correctly, you're out of here. Well, I'm a big fan of 90s punk rock, but mostly Hoopastank, and Hoopastank's pretty great. What do you think about Hoopastank? Hoopas. Well, it's not pronounced Hoopastank. It's pronounced Hoopastank Hoopas. is my favorite band. Oh, you like Hoobastank, too? When I was a teenager, I was president of the Hoobastank fan club in my chapter in my small town in Iowa. And I'm not going to tell you where I came from. You got that? Oh, so you're from Iowa? Mm -hmm. Well, mm, let, listen, I've never told anyone this before. Could you keep it a secret? Oh, okay, no problem. Hoobastank is nothing to be ashamed of anyways. It's a great band, and they have some great Sometimes licks. I just gotta... Crawl through the dark to get to see the light? No, no, no. Quit using the lyrics okay, from listen, songs. I used to be the president of my fan club of Hoobastank. Oh, Perhaps we can talk about well, Hoobastank and who second. the greatest Hoobastank No, I know uh, more about Hoobastank than anyone else around Oh, no, here. I'm going to show you up for sure. Hey guys, we're back here. Um, I have a kind of a special presentation instead of my regular city council report. It is technically city council, but it's just a little bit more. So kicking things off, we're, uh, one of the uh, uh, things that we do is Wednesdays with the mayor, which we've been kind of trying to do as best as we can, uh, but I've noticed that there's been some issues in terms of just like audio quality. And uh, we're working on that very hard, but with the streaming and just being able to do that kind of stuff, it's just been a little bit more difficult trying to come up with a, a, a clear solution to what our audio issues are. So. For this presentation, there might be some audio issues with this particular one, but these are excerpts from Wednesdays with the mayor. Unfortunately, the mayor was unable to attend this week. Um, we usually do these um, episodes every last Wednesday of the month. We try live stream them so uh, people can uh, watch them and listen to them and all that stuff. And we post them later on, and you can find it on our MCAT page at YouTube. Um, you just look up MCAT TV Missoula and you'll be able to find uh, Wednesdays with Mayor and various other programs that we've uh, made here in Missoula for Missoula. All right, Emily Armstrong took this first swing when asked about some of the goals when it comes to dealing with uh, homelessness or as the city is calling it now, houselessness. And to, to really build understanding through all of these programs that you can't address houselessness in a vacuum. It's connected to uh, addressing substance use and mental health and affordable health care and affordable housing and uh, ac um, affordable you know, wages that meet the need of the community. So there are all these other pieces that we need to also be addressing simultaneously. And that's all kind of built into the plan and also built into our partnerships with providers and folks across the community. All right, so Emily Armstrong has pr basically been the, uh, the, the face of uh, how the city of Missoula is working with a lot of organizations in town um, handling homelessness in Missoula. Another uh, point made, uh, another a big point made was priority. Folks want to uh, move to Missoula and vouchers in some ways have become a stigma for landlords to uh, completely ignore some of those people. And so here are some of the uh, uh, things that uh, Emily brings up. Just the housing um, vacancies but it's 
willingness to rent to this specific population. And that is an, another huge issue that we face constantly is property managers and landlords who yep. are unwilling to rent to this population or take a chance on them, regardless of how many months of rent they can pull up beforehand or how many people they can have vouch for them. So, Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh I mean, honestly, like in terms of just like people who uh, have a, any kind of homelessness in their ledger, in a way, it kind of becomes a scarlet a letter. And a lot of landlords are like, mm, it's not really worth the risk. And besides, right now, Missoula is going through like a big upswing of a lot of people wanting to move here. And it is a big landlord market. So they can be, there's a lot of scrutiny um, in terms of what they can do to choose who they want to rent from their places. But of course, during the presentation, they went to the audience and City Council Member Jordan Hess gave some words about this as well. And so this is what he had to say. And mind you that the audio is kind of all over the place, but uh, just try to, try to bear with me. What we do in local government is we incrementally get better. We, we learn what works. We, um, we try to um, collect good data. We try to uh, do the best we can with our scarce resources. And uh, now a few years later, we had a really successful winter shelter program um, that um, was, um, and th this year, um, we, had, um, we had no deaths from exposure that, that we're aware of. And, and that, you know, I think is a direct result of our, um, of, of, you know, all the good folks working on this and, and just a continued commitment to, to getting better. And it goes to show that uh, a lot of the movement towards this uh, winter shelter was all the people of Missoula, people coming together. And I, I mean, I've seen people go to public comment and be like, you know, they uh, voice their opinion. And a lot of them, sometimes they're, they're good opinions, but um, they really don't garner, uh, gather uh, enough support from other people. So a lot of ways, it's not about the individual going up to city council and taking on the city council. It's about them getting grouped together to try to move it towards that to get a lot of uh, public outcry when it comes to the kind of thing. And that's the, one of the reasons why the winter shelter uh, came to be is because a lot of uh, people came together to basically uh, uh, strong arm their way into getting the city to do the right thing. So um, I always go back to uh, potholes for my examples when it comes to issues. A lot of times you don't know, uh, the, the, you know, the city doesn't know that the streets are bad on the other side of town um, if they don't know about it. It's, it's the whole idea is like, you don't know that there's something wrong until you bring it up. And I mean, it even goes back to uh, talking more about some of the roads that are completely uh, destroyed and busted. And just uh, one of the things that uh, they were talking about just in recent memory is that the Grant Creek uh, Road that goes out and they're gonna be building a whole bunch of new uh, housing development up there. And a lot of people up Grant Creek and friends of Grant Creek uh, came out and said, we don't know what to do with all this stuff because we have a lot of people coming in and out and it's basically a, a one way in and one way out road in which like uh, in one year when we had that fire up Grant Creek, a lot of people were tr uh, had to uh, leave their homes and it was uh, basically um, gridlocked for quite some time. And you know, it's just one of the issues that uh, um, has been brought up is just like, access and being able to go through things and some of the issues that are just kind of there and just kind of get ignored after some time. So it's, it's, if there's an issue in Missoula that you're really passionate about, get together with your neighbors and a group of people and just uh, pressure the city into doing the right thing. That's, that's really all you can do. So there are some people who come and go during public comment and unless they get the kind of following that emergency winter shelter did nothing will ever get better so emily armstrong talks about the struggles with helping high-risk individuals with trying to get them housing one of the challenges in a lot of this work is um the, you know lives are so all, you know there's so much changing all the time phones go missing things get stolen someone moves it's hard to keep tabs on an individual who you're trying to build relationship and build support for and so having a space like this really allows our staff and our outreach folks to be able to go to this place and provide medical care provide housing care provide social support um, more reliably in a way that benefits everyone there uh, because there's more consistency of care so that's been a really significant piece of it but the goals right now are really just to have this safe legal space and, and decrease the amount of urban camping that's happening in other locations that just aren't built the same way to support human habitation they don't have the the backstop of security to help things yeah. from getting stolen they don't have bathrooms you know all of those pieces that we need so early in the pandemic uh, one of the big things that uh, the Pavarella Center had to do is basically cut themselves in half and you know people were out of jobs people I mean in some instances Emily Armstrong also mentioned in a quote that she uh, said that a person outright lost their home because they couldn't pay the mortgage on their home so the city created a designated camping site for folks uh, to help migrate them 
from the urban from illegal camping to uh, and urban camping and also give a step up without the rules and regulations that the POV would have because when you go to the POV there are a lot of rules you can't go in intoxicated you can't do drugs and a lot of times folks who are homeless a lot of their coping mechanisms are drugs alcohol and all that stuff so um, it's it's very weird how they're doing this but at the same time uh, the TOS, uh, TSOS site which is the temporary safe outdoor space that they designated um, by the other Walmart down um, up 90, uh, 93 in Brooks. Um, that was uh, the first site. And then one of the next, one of the big pushes was like, okay, so how are we going to kind of do this here? So uh, what they did is that they created that temporary safe outdoor space uh, through the city and they did it right next to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, and so that was the, uh, that was the initial uh, uh, creation of this. And with the security guards, you know, that became some, something of controversial amongst uh, some public comment and um, some city staff were concerned about the overly armed security guards. But at the same time, unless something actually happens, nothing needs to really be changed on that front. I'm not going to argue for the security or against the security. But if you think about it like this, the security is put into place to protect the assets. And the assets in this case are the homeless individuals on the uh, campsites, Palmarillo Center, and around the place as well. So uh, the numbers, uh, you know, I don't want to talk too much about, the, about that specific uh, security thing. But at the same time, they want to create that safe space and make sure that people are feeling safe and creating just like a, a small first step into getting into a more permanent housing. So Emily Armstrong spoke about Missoula plans for the uh, Trinity Navigation Center. So you're going to hear about the Trinity Navigation Center for quite some time. They're going to start doing construction, doing a lot of different things. They're going to have two main sites. Um, Emily Armstrong talks about um, that sometimes a place isn't always enough and it talks a little bit more about it. So it's not just here's a house, good luck. It's here's a house, we're going to support you through this. We're going to teach you how to use a laundry machine. We're going to teach you how to live inside, in walls. You know, that transition is, I, I think there's a misconception that, you know, if you give someone a, an indoor space, it's really easy. All of a sudden, things are fine. It is such a hard transition. So I, you know, there, there are so many stories about folks who get a house and then they continue sleeping outside because, you know, they're not comfortable being inside or they sleep on the ground instead of in their bed or, you know, all these situations, it's just such a significant transition. It takes a lot of time and a lot of learning and a lot of relationship. And so those supportive um, services are really intended to wrap around that person as they're going through that experience and walk with them as they kind of settle into this new space and then also connect them to resources as they get comfortable and start to be able to address some of the other challenges that have been impacting them, whether they're medical or mental health or whatever it may be. So that's a really significant piece as well. All right. So one of the big things that, you know, like even working at the library as well, like we have a lot of a good amount of people, you know, who, you know, you don't know their background. Uh, a lot of them are just like, OK, so they're here all the time. So I'm pretty sure they don't have a job and they might might as well just be homeless. So um, sorry, I don't make I don't mean to make that generalization. But we you know, we here around here, I don't want to I don't want to uh, talk about anyone specifically, but there's someone I know who is a camper who mostly kind of just rejects um, any kind of uh, organized uh, shelter is sheltering. Um, he just, just kind of goes out and camps somewhere in the outskirts of Missoula. I don't want to say where, but the whole idea is that he wants, he has, he doesn't really seem to have any intention of getting housing. You know, I've asked him a couple times and be like, hey, you know, you know, you, you, you know, it's going to be a rough winter. Are you not going to the winter warm shelter or anything like that? And he's like, no, nah, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want any of my stuff being stolen or anything like that. And I was like, well, you know, they have security now. And it's like, I don't know. And, and it's, it's a lot of reluctancy. And like most of the time, there's some folks who just come in here do their thing, just want to be left alone. And you know, that's just the way it is sometimes. Some people just want to be left alone. And then sometimes, you know, you have these people who interact and they just get on each other's nerves. And it's, a lot of them are just so quick to just reject anything and everything, even if it is helpful. So, the, you know, there's, the, you know, this guy has um, um, no surface value mental illness and just keeps on keeping on. The reality is that some people like living outside society because to them, that is their normal. Um, just uh, They just pop in, use the Wi-Fi now and again, and, that's, and they just move on. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of uh, different reasons why, and the human nature is both simplistic and complex at the same time. So it's just the way it is. So. Um, yeah, I want to end my segment there, but I also want to talk a little bit about another special presentation I have, and this is something that we've been doing in the for MCAT for quite some time now, but I haven't gotten a chance to kind of highlight it. It is Poets in Montana, uh, Mark Gibbons. Uh, he is the Poet Laureate in the state of Montana, which basically means uh, he's smart and awarded as such for poetry. So um, he's going to be... Uh, 
in this particular episode I'm highlighting is with Sean Hill. Um, he is a historian uh, and he is uh, talking about poetry and all sorts of stuff like that. So here is Sean Hill talking about segregation and how he never knew anything about it while growing up in Georgia. I was on the school newspaper staff and um, I was assigned to write about the 20th anniversary of desegregation, which meant in 1970-71, that's when they desegregated schools. And I just, I, like, that wasn't a part of how we were taught. Right. <laughs> you know, we were taught the dates, like, you know, Brown versus Board of Education, 1954, 55, right. yada, yada. And, um, like, no one said, but it took till 1970 for this to actually happen here. And across much of the South, like that's what all deliberate speed meant. Right. Um, right. And so like that kind of kicked me off into thinking about history and trying to like sort of figure out what, the what happened? Yeah, so um, that was uh, uh, Sean Hill talking a little bit about that. And, you know, uh, learning about Columbus in grade school is mo mostly more or less like than different from what I learned it in high school. So I watched a, drama a dramatization of Clarissa Columbus in sixth grade. This is 2001, 2002, mind you, uh, school year. Um, it painted him in a very different light. When I was in high school, the cracks started to show, and now we're kind of at this point where it kind of feels like, you know, like with critical race theory and the idea of how... Uh, education is being done I don't know it's it's it kind of feels like even with uh, Tulsa Oklahoma nobody knew about the uh, Tulsa uh, massacre that happened in in, uh, in the 1920s until you know it was much later on um, discussed and more so but the journalistic class springboarded him into history and thus poetry uh, he followed Jeffrey Wright and published a book from uh, the collections of his work and this is uh, Sean Hill once again talking a little bit more about that it was like how do you find home what, what where do you find your liberty? Where do you find your identity? Right. What is a home? Right. Which is a big part of this book. I mean, and, and I noticed that, uh, that in, it was in this book that there was, a, at one point you gave uh, like the, the Wright family tree yeah. a couple of pages to look at and that yeah. went back to 1800 yeah, yeah. in this kind of home. Right, yeah. That's a lot of generations of people. I mean, even, that, even though they, they had you know, yeah. strange lives because they were slaves and traded as property. but uh, Right. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, right. that's a, uh, my, my, o my own history in this country is 1917. Right, no, yeah, so as far back as I could trace on record in terms of a number, it was 1812 for me. Um, the Wright family is not my family, it's a fictional family, but, mm -hmm. you know, there's st the story that um, I, I that they, uh, their story is sort of a lot of people's story. It's in, in part my story too. And then one of the big things that, um, I'm, uh, of course, I'm going to um, leave you with a poem that he read. Uh, poetry is explored and discussed in this series. And before I move on to, um, I do have Sean Hill read a poem for you guys. And feel free to watch this program. Again, this is uh, available on our YouTube page, MCAT TV Missoula. You can also find it on our video on demand page, MCAT.org. So Clarissa Powell. Uh, so the poem is about uh, Clarissa Powell, a slave, talks about coming to Fort Benton, Montana, just as she was freed via emancipation. So this is a poem. Long ago, way before the story involved with you, water found the easy way through this landscape, the only way it knew, collected where gravity guided, winded ever down, gathered trickles to an eventual river what's called the Missouri, and in the then wars waning, you traveled up that water by measures to the territory of Montana, a land of fresh starts. You disembarked the Lily Martin to freedom. This marked the end of a peculiar misery for millions of your fellows this the other end of a long journey begun with an embarkment, the middle passage. In the new light of freedom, no longer property of those who brought you this far to this sublime land, you, not even a teen, had to lean on the promise of reconstruction as the shadows of black codes and Jim Crow grew with notions of our people. The 
Casas Belli as they find new uses and abuses for us. Any viewed as you or our kind were to be confined, bound to help define whiteness. And in this heart-stretching land, you met a young man, James, and y'all laid claim to a new life, a legacy. All right, so there is that, and I'm going to move on to the events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula, kicking things off. Stroller strides. Hey, if you're a mother and you have a baby, they have some fully functional total body conditioning workout designed in Tool Park for moms with kids in tow. It's a 60-minute workout. It's compromised of strength training, cardio, and core restoration at while entertaining the little ones with songs, activities, and fun. So this happens every Friday at 9.30 a.m. at Tool Park. Just join them. Um, and, you know, class will meet Monday. Oh, oh, yeah. So this is actually a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 outside locations, depending on weather. You can see that their Facebook page, Stroller Strides. All right, family fun time, Ismo Gymnastics. I haven't brought this up in quite some time. Ismo Gymnastics is an is a wonderful place for you know like you know gymnastics parkour getting your kid to explore the facility in a supervised atmosphere come play in our gym which features foam pitch trampolines obstacle courses and so much more it'll let the kids fall and still survive <laughs> sorry I, 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 um, I, I, I shouldn't laugh at that, but I'm, it's, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a terrible person. Anyways, family fun time at Mismo Gymnastics. Fun way for kids to be safe and still be able to do some flips and stuff. Oh, right. Empower Place, an open play hour. So this is at the Missoula Food Bank and Community Center. They are hosting a hands-on learning center located at Missoula Food Bank. As we are getting into the summer uh, time, this is a fun event for a lot of kids. They have their own version of Tiny Tales and Story Time uh, around 10.30 a.m. And it's through the uh, Spectrum Discovery Center, Missoula Public Library, a good partnership for children, young adults, and parents. Empower Place offers enriching experiences free of charge to all Missoula families. And speaking of enrichment, Tiny Tales and Story Time is happening at 10.30 today at the Missoula Public Library like it always does. A great way for kids to do uh, uh, to learn about books, stories, and all sorts of things to engage them in reading and learning and love of literature. Yarns is going to be at noon today. It's about stitching and stuff. Uh, watercolor painting class. It's pretty popular. I, I went up there one day. I was like, geez, there's like 30 people here. And uh, a lot of people liking these uh, watercolor and yarns classes. It happens every Friday at noon. Uh, it's up on the fourth floor, mind you. So Glacier Lake, Missoula, Evidence and Origins. So the Montana Nature Center, Montana Natural History Center is um, doing a presentation. Um, ge geologist uh, Bruce Beatty will discuss the origin of Glacier Lake, Missoula, a lake uh, the size of Lake Erie that existed in western Montana 12,000 years ago. The lake filled and drained many times and left evidence of its existence across the landscape of Missoula. If you actually look at Mount Sentinel and some of the mountains, you can see some of the lines that still are, are existing from the lake it would fill up and go down and you see those layers as they and each layer is the many different years as the water would be less and less every single year so it's pretty cool some cool things there and you get to meet with the geologist bruce Beatty. Uh, and this happens from one to two this afternoon at the montana natural history center all right, so if you're interested in Photoshop or Premiere lessons, we do a workshop here at MCAT at 3 and 4 o'clock. You can sign up by calling us, or you can reserve online through the Missoula Public Library website, um, or you can go to MCAT.org for more information. So are you smarter than a high schooler? Let's find out. 6 p.m. at Oregon Park at Allegiance Village or the Montana World Affair Council for a fun evening of global trivia. The same questions that the 300 Montana high schoolers answered during the 2022 Academic World Quest. Uh, they want to increase the 2023 Academic a Google Quest Scholarship Fund to uh, $15,000 and start a scholarship fund for the new program, uh, Equinist, Econiquest, which this will allow for offer programs free to Montana schools. So um, that's going to be fun. And if you're uh, an adult who likes D&D, the library is doing a D&D at 6 p.m. They, they usually do it online and it's hosted by Brian here at the library. And you can check it out more by going to miserablepubliclibrary.org. Uh, the Hue is going to be at the Wilma. Some, some performances are happening tonight as well as um, 
the SpongeBob musical. So off Broadway and uh, quite some time after that, MCT is going to be doing the SpongeBob musical. Every wanted to see a tap dancing featuring Squidward's four feet. Well, this is the uh, musical for you. Um, most shows are happening um, Wednesday through uh, Sunday. Evening shows at 7.30 p.m. Sunday has an early evening show at 6.30, and then all matinees around 2 o'clock most days. Half an hour, show up early, and then you should be good to go. It's a SpongeBob musical. If you like SpongeBob, it's all for you. Um, so closing night, the International Wildlife Film Festival is going to be at the Finn Restaurant. All are welcome to enjoy the closing night alongside Clark Fork River at the Finn Restaurant at the Doubletree Hotel. They'll have one last evening to appreciate all the talent and wild stories of the week, not to mention the inevitable scheming of the new films with friends. All are welcome, and this is happening from 7.30 to 10 p.m. tonight. All right, so if you're interested in doing some uh, late night uh, clubbing and hanging out, punchy fun bags, party time deluxes at Monk's tonight. Russ Nassin and the River Leaders is going to be at the Union Club. Nice jam band and all that stuff. So that's pretty much it for your Friday events. Let's kick things off with your Saturday events. As we are one week away from the downtown farmer's market, um, basically next week, starting May 7th, the farmer's market is going to be kicking off in the downtown Missoula area. Um, come hell or high water, um, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you guys can also enjoy the Orchard Homes um, Market and also the uh, market that happens at the uh, Southgate Mall. And that's going to be happening usually about 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can't miss it. It's a great chance to enjoy some locally made and grown produce. All right, the 50th annual YMCA Riverbank Run. Uh, this is going to be starting at 9 a.m. at the Missoula Family YMCA off Russell Street. This is their 50th annual, so it's probably a pretty big deal for sure. So you guys can enjoy that. It starts at 9 a.m. They have a lot of different information at their YMCA's website in YMCAMissoula.org, I believe. So you might have to just Google YMCA Missoula. It's probably the best thing to do. Forestry Day at the Fort. So this is a kind of a big deal because MCAT has filmed these for the last couple, a couple years. And, you know, you know, they chop wood competition, climbing uh, logs, and all sorts of lumberjack and jacky competitions. So workshops, raptors, and art, Missouri Museum, the popular summer camp is now offered as an adult workshop. Spend the morning studying live raptors like hawks and owls like with Kate Davis, director of the Raptors of the Rockies, and Bev Beck, Kukert, teaching artists. Participants will have the opportunity to study the live models and learn bird anatomy. So it's a great uh, opportunity to mix art and orniculture. Orniculture? I think I got that wrong. All right, moving on. <laughs> Um, also, the Missouri Museum is doing a teen uh, art studio. It is a great opportunity for teens to um, engage in art. So if you have a teenager who is an artist, this is a good opportunity. They do this every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. And if you have a young kid between the ages of 8 and 14, MCAT's the place to be. Uh, MCAT Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 3 p.m. It's every Saturday until the end of May as we start hustling for our summer camps, which you can find out more information in, at MCAT.org. And this weekend is also the last uh, chance to do the noise generation generating sculpture workshop, mixing um, noise generation with some sculptures, hands-on stuff, participants to learn the history and physics of sound art through the creation of the vibrational, irrational, sensational alternative instruments for sound generation and effects triggers from found and fabricated objects and supplied psychedelic um, components and all that stuff like that. You guys can enjoy this. This is happening uh, at the Missoula Public Library and happening here in this very room, uh, the same place that we do our Saturday drop-ins for the kids. So great fun times had by all. So here's some late night events that are happening. Uh, Free Cycles is doing a bluegrass concert featuring Lainey Lou and the Bird Dogs with Hardwood Heart. Girl 20, <laughs> sorry, that was too loud. Girl 2022 tour is gonna be at the Wilma uh, Saturday night. Big Sky Handbell Concert is going to be a uh, Central High School Gym. Stand Up Comedy is going to be featured, featuring uh, Trevor Noah from The Daily Show is going to be at the University of Montana. Comedian Trevor Noah will perform at the Adams Center um, April 30th, um, 2022. Solid Snake Karaoke at the Westside Lanes and Fun Center. Muse Showcase at Monk's. Jackson Holt at Union Club, DJ Chris Moon every Saturday at the Bandlander. And just so you guys know, May is Bike Month and Sunday is the first day of May. Happy Bike Month. There is a community event throughout the entire month of May and you can click uh, on the link through uh, uh, the uh, 
I want to say Missoula in Motion websites. Uh, bike Month is happening all month of May to encourage people to get out and enjoy some bike riding because it is time to be outdoors and have some fun with that. So if you want to learn more information about the Missoula events and more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. If you want to learn more about me and my show and more about MCAT stuff, you can go to MCAT.org. You can also find me on my YouTube page, Wake Up Missoula, and all sorts of fun stuff like that. So and yeah, there's not much more I have to say, but I wanted to thank you guys for joining me this morning and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramph.